David Dodge here, the Discount Property Investor. I just did an awesome podcast with a good friend of mine, Steve Trang, out of the Phoenix market. And Steve and I talked about private lending and private investors and how with the current COVID-19 pandemic, how these investors and these private lenders aren't wanting to lend uh, as much as they typically were. Things three weeks ago are not the same as they are today. And they may not be you know, back to the way they were in three more weeks. It may be three months or even three quarters. We're, we're not quite sure. But I just recorded an awesome episode with Steve. And we talked all about some of the approaches and some of the strategies that you can use to get private lenders today during this pandemic. These approaches also are great approaches to use after so post so if you're watching this at a later date it still applies check out this episode you guys are going to love it as welcome back to the discount property investor podcast this is your host david dodge and i got steve trang back on the show this is the second or third time steve i can't remember second second time that i've had you on the show thanks for coming on today buddy good to see you how you been I've been good, man. Thank you for having me on. I really enjoy, you know, working, talking to people that are trying to do the same thing. It's a lot of fun. I mean, this is kind of like my drug. You know, it is. This is my drug. Mind sharing, mind melding with other top producers. It's a lot of fun for me. It's a it's a great time. So, Steve, uh, the reason I have I have you on, you have a wealth of knowledge. You have a podcast. I love the podcast, guys. If you haven't heard of Steve's podcast, uh, go check it out. Steve, tell us a little bit about the podcast. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I started the podcast trying to uh, merge the wholesale and the realtor community because I felt like we're all trying to do the same thing. We're just trying to do it a little bit differently. But I think as a realtor, you should add wholesaling as a pillar. As a wholesaler, you should get licensed so you can get paid legally to refer deals versus, you know, bird dogging, which is, you know, is that legal? I argue it's not, but whatever. Everyone do whatever you want to do. Um, I started it and what I found was realtors still hate wholesalers and I've kind of become a little bit of a black sheep in the realtor community. So, Hey, you know, I, I started with a purpose, that purpose went to crap, but I'm having a fun time doing it and it, it's opened up a lot of doors for me. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up. Real estate disruptors. Check that out guys. Steve, you've been posting a ton lately about some private money stuff. And oh, yeah. um, I wanted, I wanted to do a, to talk a little bit about that today. So uh, today's episode is April 8th. We have probably about uh, five episodes in front of this one. So this one will be out. We do it every other day, though. So this one will be out probably around the 20th of April. Um, The reason I dropped the date, you know, usually I don't, and it doesn't matter about the dates, but we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, you know, if if you're listening to this in July or August, it might be a little different story. But when this publishes, we will still be in it. And, you know, things are changing right now, guys. Um, This is unprecedented. This isn't, now I want to clarify, this isn't a recession. This isn't a depression. I hear these words on the TV every day. Not yet. This is a pandemic. We've never experienced this. Now, will it get to one of those two things? Who the hell knows? I mean, I I would think the recession is, is almost guaranteed. However, you know, markets move in cycles and you have to know this. And you have to position yourself to find opportunity no matter what part of the cycle you are in. So personally, I think that what's happening is terrible. However, I'm excited right now because there is going to be a massive amount of motivated sellers when we come out of this, okay? And I'm not, again, I'm not excited because of the the reason. I'm excited because of the opportunity that it is going to bring us so with that being said and i don't want to talk the whole time steve i got you on as a guest my man well i want to add on that though sure i want to add on that though like i started real estate i started investing in 2006 trying to buy rental properties thank god the banks were denying our loans back in 2007 or i would have some foreclosures on my records would have had some bad debt uh but i you know i got started you know quick uh rich dad poor dad back in 2005 buying rental properties 2006 and I got, I became a realtor because I was in the market uh, and things went to crap and I couldn't take advantage of it. I couldn't. And I watched all these wealthy people 
just crush it, just murder it in the, in the downtime where I'm sitting here showing $30,000 properties, selling $50,000 properties, and I've got clients that are cash rich, just gobbling properties up, you know? And so for me, I've been preparing and waiting for this. So like you, I'm excited for the opportunity. Man, that's what's up. Why it had to happen, how it came to pass. But at the end of the day, we knew something was going to drop. We didn't think it was going to drop like this. But we knew something was going to happen, and we've been waiting for it. It's, been, it's bound to. You know, it, it's, it's inevitable that you're going to have, you know, slowdowns and corrections and dips and, uh, yeah, so on and so forth. So I love it. So you've been talking a little bit about some private money stuff I've been seeing lately online. Um, you have private money uh, investors. I have private money investors. Um, however, due to the pandemic, it's slowing down a little bit. You know, um, I personally have had a lot of people in my local mastermind here in St. Louis that have been telling me that they have been selling properties on the MLS no differently than they were pre COVID-19. Like they, they basically hasn't changed. Haven't, hasn't changed at all. Right. And a lot of the wholesalers in the space right now aren't having as much luck with their cash buyers list, but they're wholesaling uh, via the MLS. I know I am my team. We're making sure that we can list every property that we're talking with the sellers on, um, getting their approval, putting it up owner by contract, um, or even, you know, put a contract uh, in place with them. But typically we're just listing it owner by contract. I know not all ML- MLSs even have that option. We do here in St. Louis. And we've been having a lot of good luck, you know, selling that way. However, those people are using bank financing typically, right? Or cash, mm-hmm. which is rare, but that's another option. Um, but us individual investors and, and rehabbers and, you know, landlords and so on and so forth that's buying, a lot of times we're using private money. Um, I had about two and a half million from just other investors and friends and people like that. Pre-COVID-19, I think I probably have three quarters of that still. However, my investors are wanting to know a little bit more about the project. Uh, versus, you know, mm-hmm. maybe three months ago when I would just send them a text with an address. And <laughs> they were a little less uh, hands-on back then. Yeah, it'd be five pictures and a text, right? And they'd be like, okay, cool. This is a good one. When do you close? You know, it's changing a little bit. So again, I wanted to have you on. Thanks for coming. Um, and just talk a little bit about what, what you're working on, what you're up to, man. Fill us in. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is, like you mentioned, like the MLS actually hasn't changed. Uh, has the market slowed down a bit? It's slowed down a tick, you know, it's a little bit less of a seller's market. But at the end of the day, the MLS is still selling, right? And so the retail side hasn't changed, but the flippers definitely have changed because they're not worried about today. They're worried about three, four, six months from now. And likewise, the people back in their deals, lending on it are less optimistic. So they don't want to put their money out there. And so what's happened is as a flipper, whereas before, at least in the Phoenix market, you're okay with 80 82% 82% minus repairs. You're okay with that as a flipper because what else are you going to get? That's what you have to pay. You're competing as I buyers, right? You're saying 80% so, is, it was your discount rate in your MAO formula. Yeah, right, okay. as a flipper. Right. Now they can be picked here. They can go to 70, 75 or not. They can. They have to because there's less liquidity. Are the I buyers the backing market. out right now? I buyers are gone. Oh, they're gone. Wow, I didn't know that. They're gone. We don't have that many in St. Louis. I think we maybe have one or two. If any, and they're not, I mean, they're just not, they're not in this market yet. You guys have a way yeah. bigger market out there. So, you know, my, my, my discount rate's typically 70 to 75 and it's shifted to 60 to 65. So I'm basically yeah. taking an ARV, multiplying it by 60 to 65 right now, minus in my repairs, minus in my wholesale fee. That's my offer. If I'm wholesaling it, no fee. If I'm not wholesaling it, uh, but yeah, it's going down 10% just because of the uncertainty. However, uncertainty, I do want to say this, Steve, and, I do want to say this. Higher. Yeah. However, though, what I am telling a lot of people, and we're building a massive list of people that will sell once we get through this right now, we have a lot of uncertainty. People don't want to move during this. They also don't have a place to go right now. And our, and our level of motivation is only going to climb amongst people that are living check to check. And, you know, so on and so forth. Forgot where I was going with this. Well, well, what I would say is we're building the same pipeline as well. Oh, the pipeline. Yeah. So we're telling people, hey, today my offer 
is, you know, going to be this. However, three weeks ago, it was this. And hopefully three months ago, it'll be that again. But if you need to sell right now, there's uncertainty. So I got to get a better deal. Basically, as wholesalers, right? All we do is trade convenience for a discount. That's all we do. Big picture. Mm -hmm. We provide liquidity to the marketplace, period, right? Yep. Therefore, if, you, if I'm going to trade convenience for that discount, right now, my convenience has a higher value. So I need to get yeah. a better discount. So I'm telling people that. I'm saying, listen, if you want to sell today, it's 60 grand. If you can wait two or three months, I'll give you 80 or 100. And I'm building up a lot of people that are like, okay, if we get ultra motivated, we'll call you right back. However, yeah. you know, once your money, because I'm very transparent. I tell them all, hey, you know, we typically buy everything with cash, private lenders, and then we take it to banks or we flip it out or whatever it is. But right now, my lenders who are, so could be your neighbors, they see the same news you see, right? So <laughs> exactly. It, 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 the uncertainty is out there and it's seeming to work quite a bit. Yeah. And so that's something that we've been telling our conversation is, you know, the price of certainty has gone up, right? If you want certainty, that price has gone up. But so for us, the dynamics changing, the flippers, they want to see for discount, which is understandable because their cost, their holding time is going to go up, their borrowing costs are up and there's uncertainty. So they have to buy lower. And as a result, we have to buy lower. But if we can't buy lower because, you know, sellers are still attached to retail as a percentage of retail, which hasn't changed, then who's getting squeezed, right? Predominantly, it's us getting squeezed. So uh, the dynamic between flippers and wholesalers in our market, at least, has been you don't want to pay this price too bad. Either you're paying this price or I've got five other flippers that are ready to go. Today, the conversation is like, can you, will you pay this price? No. And I was like, okay, well, he's the only buyer. <laughs> so he gets to command, dictate my fee or what I'm going to make on this, which is not a good situation as a wholesaler. So for us, what we're doing is we're going after private money. So uh, up to a couple weeks ago, I had a million dollar uh, line, right? With a private lender who our agreement was, she was funding it, funding the rehab, no points, no down payment and no payments, right? At 10%. Yeah, that's what I'm at. I'm at. I'm at 12, but it's the exact same. So right. funding and the purchase and convenient. the rehab, no points, no payments, all in the back end. Yep. yep. And that was so, incredibly convenient. Yep. And so I gone. do tenant, I offer my my lenders the option. I'll pay them 10% no points with the monthly payments, interest only, and then you know the balloon at the end when I sell it, or I'll give them the extra two percentage points, not points though, two extra interest points rate points right mm -hmm. yep. um to pay them all in the rears with no payments in the middle and some of my lenders will, will do a little bit of both because they'll want some of that monthly income others will just say i'll oh, let it grow so love it it's very yep. similar very similar yeah. and so but she's gone now and i've been comfortable <laughs> well, temporarily 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 but i've been comfortable right like i haven't had to build a private money uh, uh you know bank Right. I didn't need that because I had one that was really good, who was reliable, and I could always, you know, whenever I needed money, it was a call, and two days later, that money was in a title. You know, it was really simple. But that, that ship has sailed, and I think the reality is for wholesalers to make the kind of money they were making before, before the virus, I think we're going to look at wholesaling as a real business model. In fact, that's kind of how I got started. I was wholesaling until I ran out of money. Then I started wholesaling. <laughs> uh, and you know, wholesaling paid really well, right? Right. But I think that's going to get squeezed a little bit. And I think wholesaling is what we're going to have to do to get the same margins, or or not lar larger. You know, make make twenty k on a on on a wholesale. And the only way to make that happen is to get private money. I totally agree. I totally agree. So what are you what So what are you working on? So you just said that your your private money lender went away temporarily. Again, she sees the same news I see and that you see, right? We all see the same thing. Yep. There's uncertainty out there. We will get through this, guys. If you are listening, you are watching, we will get through this. Is it gonna be a couple weeks, a couple months, maybe even a couple quarters? Who knows? We'll see when we get there, right? right? But yep. we will get through this. And when we do, that person will be back. What are you doing in the meantime? So we're trying to raise private money or not. We're trying, we're going to raise private money. Okay. And really what it comes down to is a couple of different things. Uh, one is we know historically, if you go back to look at all the kind of private money lenders you've talked to in the past, they tend to fall in one of three categories. They're either business owners, 
or they're uh, licensed professionals, or they're in the real estate industry. And the reason why is if you're a business owner, you don't have a 401k, you don't have an IRA, you don't have whatever your employer is giving you, right? Uh, W-2 employees, and there's nothing wrong with being a W-2 employee, right? We need W-2 employees, like 90%, 95% of the world is W-2. But they're not generally creative thinkers. They just kind of go with the flow, right? And so they're not going to be as interested in investing in real estate. But the business owners, they've got no one to create a fund for them. So they're out there reading, you know, they're on E-Trade or Stock Market Watch or whatever, Market Watch. They're out there gambling. So, exactly, exactly. So <laughs> these are people that could be uh, good sources. Um, dentists and doctors, like everyone that's in private money loves dentists and doctors, right? So finding these guys um, and then real estate professionals, because there are, believe it or not, some realtors and brokers that are actually successful and they understand leverage. Right, they understand creative financing and all that good stuff. So there's that that community. And the other thing too is you and I we're offering cash for people as houses, but how often are we as wholesalers asking the homeowner what they're doing with that money? Because we know what their pain was. We know that they were gonna whatever they needed to go take care of that pain, we know that's done. So we do it and our they probably can have a little fun. But you are absolutely right. Most people or trying to solve that problem. Once they get over it, they could care less about the seller. You know, they just wanna solve the immediate problem so they can go make a profit. However, sometimes solving a problem creates another one. I love this, see, this is a gold nugget right here. And um, there's taxes that have to be paid a lot of times whenever you buy a property from somebody, they've owned it for a really, a really long time, unless it's, you know, inherited. Uh, but even in that case, there could be. Um, and sometimes they just don't have a place to put it or they're, they're afraid they're going to lose it. So I love that. I absolutely love right. that strategy of talking to the seller and saying, Hey, if you, you know, speaking of this, we're going to go off on a really quick tangent. I'll, I'll keep it under a minute. Um, I had a guy probably three months ago, he heard one of my radio ads and he uh, called me and he acted like he wanted to sell his house. And then when I got there, I was like, man, this house is in great shape. It's in a great neighborhood. I'm like, you're going to hate my offer. Sorry to waste your time. I made him an offer like 75 cents of, of what the Zillow estimate said, just because I knew he wasn't going to take it. And it was just from the hip, right? And he goes, yeah, you're not mm -hmm. here for that. He goes, but I like the fact that you flip houses and I've heard your ad on the radio for a, over a year and a half. You've done a ton of deals, I would assume. He's like, I got money to invest. And I'm like, what? You just called me to come over here to Talk to me about that. And I picked up a private lender like that from a radio advertisement. Yeah, prospecting. About, sell, <laughs> about me being the buyer, right? Yeah, so right. It's, the opportunity yeah. is out there, guys. It is, definitely. Yeah, he's prospecting. And I think that's, that, that's a great advantage that you and I have, right? Is that we've got, a credi we got the credibility and we've got the track record. The newer guy, you know, he's probably gonna have to start with friends and family. That's just kind of the reality. Hey, kind my of probably the, the world first house in. I bought when I was 20 years old, I'm 35. So that's 15 years ago. I still own it today, Steve. I borrowed money from my grandparents to go get a loan. And that was the 20% that I put down, leveraged the 80%, house hacked in college, got the rent paid for free and paid them back over uh, three and a half years. That's, that's okay. Awesome. That's okay, right? Yeah, that is totally that's okay. the perfect that. place to start. Go to your yeah. friends and family. But once and that's you, how I started. It's the, that's how, it's, it's the best place to start. Who else is going to let yeah. you get build credibility, right? A stranger is not going to care to help you get credibility. Your family wants to see you succeed. Exactly, exactly. So I've been very lucky. You know, I, my first few were through my parents. And then eventually it was uh, parents of friends and so on. Like they, were, they were my private money. And so I had a track record. And then, you know, we can get more uh, private money. Uh, but definitely, if, you're, if, you're, if you need money, talking to friends and family, talking to not necessarily your friend who's probably poor, but his parents. Yeah. You know right? what else is a his great network. way to get, to get private money is people that have a lot of money in their retirement accounts. And, you know, even if they're conservative investors, they can convert those into self-directed. I'm sure you, I mean, I have a self-directed IRA and I've never really been in the business of trying to convert my friends or family to do that. But I know a ton of people who have had a lot of success with that. In fact, um, 
there's a guy in my building. His name's Jimmy. I'm not going to say his last name. You probably know of him or heard of him or know him. Um, but all he does specifically, he's it's it's brilliant. But he he targets um, uh, personal financial planners, right? Like people that mm-hmm. work at Edward Jones or not so much that, but you know, and uh, also people that sell life insurance. And he gets them to you know lend against their life insurance policies as well as move money into these self-directed IRAs. And uh, he's done that to buy probably, I think he's at 160 rentals or something crazy like that. Yeah. hundred percent from, amazing from we can that. Do. So. Well, and I think that's one of the other things, right? Was going to these places that have their self-directed IRAs. You know, I was talking to somebody and they're just sponsoring these events. I was like, do you know what you're doing? He's like, no, but if I'm around money all the time, like <laughs> opportunity is going to fall Opportunity is going to, that's such a great point. It's going to fall in our laps. Uh, man. I yeah. So, but, and, and having that conversation with someone that's, you know, been in the stock market, you know, if you were talking to them two months ago, it's like, Hey, I, there's a way for you to make six to 8% on your money. They'd be like, get the hell out of here. I've been crushing it in the stock market. <laughs> Boy, that, that tune has changed. Yes, 6% it has. Sounds real sexy today. And you still sleep well with 6%. Yes. Man, that's, that yeah. is awesome. So, so what are you, so again, your, your lender, you know, she's got the heebie jeebies, right? She's worried. So what, what's next for you, man? What are you, what are you going to be getting into here? I know there's certain things that you, you can't say, obviously, but uh, fill us in. What's some of the, what's your game plan to get some private money soon? Well, that's really it. I mean, we're going to hit the public records, you know, okay. uh, None of this information is secret. You know, yeah. if you want to get creative, find your own way, like there's a way to make it happen, you know? So right. uh, we're going to be going through the public records and we're going to be doing lots of cold call, which is no different than what we do for wholesaling. Right? Same, it's same the thing. Same conversation, just a different way of saying it. Just a different, different message, but the intention is the same and the process is the same. So, you know what? Right. I love, I love that. And you had said earlier in the beginning, a couple things here, actually, you know, if you're new, you're, it's going to be tough to get strangers to lend you money, especially if you don't have a track record. So go to your friends and family, have them help you build that track record. Right. Yeah. Um, once you do have some experience and you go to, you know, private lenders like Steve and I are talking about now, or even banks, the, so some of the easiest ways to show credibility and experience is to document it. So like make a YouTube channel. Oh my goodness. Right? So like this is a podcast right here, guys, but I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel as well. And in five years, when I walk into a bank, which I already can do today, but in five more years, I'll have 20 years experience at that point, not 15. And a bank says, hey, have you ever done this? And I just say, hey, go pull up my YouTube. And there's hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of videos time stamped of you walking through properties teaching people mm-hmm. what's going on i like to call it digital real estate what's your digital re- re- real estate look like you know are you building yeah. that out you know you i own 63 rentals right now that's cool and all but i'd really like to have 63 websites you know <laughs> making money too so you know there's definitely yeah. some, a good way to look at that so document it guys keep track of it create yourself a youtube video um, I love that. So you're going to be cold calling some, um, via the public record. So you're going to be going after mm-hmm. professionals. You said earlier, uh, real estate Licensed professionals, uh, doctors, dentists, doctors wherever dentists. we can find them. Right. Man, doctors and dentists. Like every, everyone in the private money space loves doctors. Tired, but, but, but yeah, nonetheless. Yeah. So the professionals, yeah. I think most of my, uh, most of mine fall within all those categories. Absolutely. Yeah. Real estate it's amazing. Doctors, doctors. It's pretty consistent. We have a dentist. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So what's the approach? Cold calling them just like you would a motivated seller. Uh, how are you going to tailor the pitch? Well, it's going to be, you know, hey, I don't know what you're doing right now for investing. I don't know if you're paying attention to the stock market. How do you feel about that? You know, it's the same thing with the paint funnel. How do you feel about it? Is that working yep. for you? Are you excited about it? You know, if things <laughs> were this way every year, like, would you be all right? Call and the they're going to tell you like, are you excited about it? Hey, have you seen the news today? Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the pain funnel all over again. Right. right? It, it, like I said, the what are you, you going to do about it? Oh, you don't, you don't yeah. know. Oh man. That's, that's gotta be causing you stress too. Right. I mean, you yeah. I mean, I don't know down. if you ever looked at some other options, you know, they're, you know, the investors I work with, they make six to 8% consistently. I don't know if that's something you'd ever considered. Yeah. And it's also you know? backed by real estate, you know, which is the coolest thing. You know, what's your stock right. back by? 
not, you know, it's obviously backed by a balance <laughs> sheet and an income statement, but like you can't go get a piece of that. It's backed by all those crooks on Wall Street. Yeah. Insider trading. Right. Right. <laughs> No, I, I absolutely love that approach, Steve. I think that is phenomenal, man. Keep that up. I, I'm confident that you guys are going to have a ton of success with that because there is, yeah. there, there is, this is another win-win scenario that you're going to create here. You know, it's absolutely gonna, right. Like they're yeah. going to be better off working with us than watch, than watching this roller coaster. Cause I don't know. I mean, forget the fact that it's not a tangible asset. Forget that. Right. That's already risky enough. But there are people that log into the E-Trade or whatever every day as part of their morning routine. And God, I can't imagine how much your day sucks when you start fuck off that. with a I'll big negative drop in the morning. Yeah, fuck that, man. I did, I, you know what's crazy is uh, you're, you're on Instagram. We both are building our accounts on there. It's fun on Instagram. It's such fun, fun, man. I love Instagram. Fun playground. I, I get comments all the time from all these people trying to spam um fx trading you know all this trading man, that just man that yeah. just blows my mind that crypto uh, <laughs> yeah it just seems stressful you're absolutely right so let's talk about some of the win wins real quick here so you know you're going to be creating a win because you're going to be giving somebody um an investment that's going to give them a higher return. It's going to basically, I can't say it's going to be a guaranteed return because all investments carry risk, but it's going to be a lot more secured. Um, than secured, reliable, consistent. Secured, reliable, consistent. Love those keywords right there. Love those. Um, not only that, but a lot of our investors and private lenders, they like what we do. And sometimes they like want to come tag along and they, they like to use it to learn. Whereas if you go buy mm -hmm. like some, you know, General Motors stock or some whatever, you name it, you know, you're not going to learn shit. Let's be honest, right? Maybe you'll yeah. start studying the charts a little bit more, but you're not going to learn shit. Um, we're bringing back neighborhoods. We're updating and upgrading and sometimes leveling and rebuilding houses. So we're making the neighborhood a better place. There's so many wins with this. Absolutely. You know? I think it's awesome, man. I really do. Steve, thank you for coming on the show today, buddy. Anything else that you have been up to? Um, tell, fill, fill me in, man. It's been a while since we've talked. Well, uh, you know, since we met at We Live in Dallas in, in March of 19, uh, so about a year ago, uh, I've started yeah, I've doing self training. I've lost 30 pounds since then. You have? 30. I told you you look younger. Thank you. Yeah, I was at 214. <laughs> yeah. And now I weighed myself this morning. I'm at 185. So that's awesome. Congratulations. I think that's 30. Isn't uh, it? Not very good at math. It's around there. Yeah. <laughs> but the guys that, the, the, when I was at that event, you know, when I talked about it, I was like, you know, I hope this opens some eyes. I hope this changes some people's, you know, perspective and how they approach things. And I, I didn't get some, I got a lot. In fact, I got invited to multiple bigger speaking events just because of that you know oh, and yeah. basically what i've learned is that people are craving um a system which everyone thinks they're good at sales and there's nothing wrong with that but then when they learn how to do it properly now they've sharpened their sword like they already had a pretty good sword now this sword is ready right you've got a katana blade now right and you yep. sharpen it enough yep and so that's been uh there's a lot of asked for that. And so now I started promoting it. Uh, it's just disruptors.com. Um, Hell and yeah. it's not for everybody, right? Disruptors.com. I like it, man. We'll add it to the show notes here. Yeah. So it's not for everybody, but anyone that wants to check it out, we got that. And then, uh, so what the, is it? Help uh, fill me in. What is disruptors.com? Uh, so it's just going to be sales training. It's a six months of mentorship and we're going to teach you the framework and, but it's not just teaching the framework because I can, I can give you the framework in an hour, right? That's easy. Uh, was really it is involved is really changing the way you approach things. And it, the example or the analogy is if I told you I was going to go down to Mexico this weekend and become fluent in Spanish, you would laugh your ass off. Or if I told you, hey, I got this course, I'm going to learn how to be a I dentist this weekend. I know where you're going weekend. with this. I think this is great. I, I'm going to be a dentist. I'm gonna, I got this course online. I'm going to learn to be a dentist this weekend. You would not come to see me. Yeah, you, for your no teeth. way. No way. <laughs> right? Okay. And so cool. basically what we're doing is we're going for the framework, but then we're going deep into it and we're making them practice it. We're, make, we're having them apply it in their real world because they're getting beat up in, 
bloodied in the houses, right? Or now over the phone. And it's like, here's what the seller said. Here's what I got stuck. And I can coach them through it. So now they can be more effective and they can actually save, salvage some of the deals that they've lost. So we've helped people salvage deals that they thought, that they thought was, uh, was dead. And then we're helping them close more deals. I mean, watching guys, one of our guys that, that joined our program, he literally spent his last dollars from his tax return in May of 2019. And last month, I think he said he was going to clear 88K in revenue. Like, that makes me so freaking happy. So that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, how cool yeah. is that? That is freaking yep. awesome. Hell and yeah. so, yeah, that and then just continue to give. You know, I think right now is an interesting time. And uh, I, not that there's a shortage of people speaking. I think there's plenty of speaking. But, um, you know, I'm in it. I'm doing it. I'm doing the business. So uh, I, I'm on a lot of platforms right now kind of sharing the message. And I think it's important that someone that's in it, someone that's doing it, and someone that's losing, right? Like, I, I'm not winning every single deal, right? I'm losing too. Oh, man. But you someone know, that I... could speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. But I'd say, like, having someone out there as, as a, uh, a messenger on, you know, it's going to be okay, and we're going to be fine. Just like you said, you know, it sucks, but it's going to be great. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Steve, I absolutely love that. I, I got asked to speak at Aria just the other, just a couple, a uh, couple months ago, maybe two months ago. And, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the main thing that I said when I got up in front of everybody is I go, listen, guys, I go, I feel uncomfortable being on this stage because I'm the biggest loser in this room, you know? And they all started yeah. laughing and I go, no, seriously though, I have fucked up, lost, made the most mistakes and that's why i'm where i'm at and you guys are listening right now right so yeah. like the fact that i'm here like let me share share as much as i possibly can with you guys and i'm grateful to be here but the reality is is that i've made more mistakes than you have so let me try to teach you some of the things not to do right and, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, and i think I that's the it, it's one of, uh, I can't remember it was like a, a Shaolin monk or whatever, but you know, like the reason why I'm here is I failed more than more times than you've tried. More times than you've even tried. Right. And that's the truth. Yeah. Of it. That's, that is the truth of it. Hell yeah. Steve, yeah. thanks for coming on the show. Let's wrap it up. I want to keep like keeping these episodes a little shorter, but again, it's always a pleasure to connect with you. I appreciate you. You're a great friend at this point. So again, thank you for coming on. We're going to be bringing you back soon. Uh, definitely post COVID-19 to follow up with you to see how the cold calling um, of these private money lenders, hopefully by the time we talk next, you got $5 million and you're buying. Oh, buying, it's going to be more than that. I'm shooting for, I'm shooting for 10 to 20. Come on. 10 to 20, even better. I love it. Yeah. Steve, thanks again, guys. Check out Steve at uh, realestatedisruptors.com. Is that the podcast one? Yeah, the podcast is realestatedisruptors.com. The sales training is just disruptors.com. And then I love it. And then just disruptors.com. Man, he's got some damn good domain names. Speaking of good domain names, freewholesalecourse.com. Guys, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. And I just added last week freewholesaleblueprint.com. Mm. The blueprint is different than the course. This is the actual systems that I use in my business for every single step of the way. So freewholesalecourse.com, freewholesaleblueprint.com. Check those out. Steve, thanks again for coming. Until next time, signing off. What an episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Guys, hit that subscribe button. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this video. If you agree or disagree or if there's anything that we forgot to mention, I love having conversations in the comments down below. So drop me a comment and let me know what you thought of this video. As always, thanks for watching, guys. More videos to come. More in the works. If you haven't already checked out the free wholesale course, I always push people to start there. And I have a brand new free product for you guys. Head on over to freewholesaleblueprint.com. This is different than the course. This is actually a blueprint of what our business looks like, what my business looks like, all of the systems that I use in my business to locate motivated sellers. Check it out, freewholesaleblueprint.com.
www.thegreatmovement.com. Thanks for watching. Signing off.